Well, if Andy Schleck thinks yesterday's descent was dangerous, wait until he takes a look at today's. In fact, strike that because he's already ridden it in reconnaissance and declared it mortally dangerous. Well, Chris, you've ridden up it today uh, and back down. Uh, what do you make of it? Well, it was extremely painful going up it and really scary coming down it. It is an incredibly difficult descent, the, the steepest that we've seen in this year's race. And it's got a combination of, of problems. This dappling that we can see with all the shadows on the road is hiding a lot of bumps and this higher part of it and that will mean that the wheels can unseat off the tarmac just as they're braking really hard so that could cause a skid there's a lot of hairpins all the way down as well and the, the issues with them is that you can't see them coming within the, in the trees so you're just going to have to take a risk or not as the case may be as you go around them so very 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 steep not great visibility and massively changing light so Unlike yesterday's, when the consensus seemed to be that Andy Schleck was a lone voice, do you think he's got a point? Is today's descent dangerous? I don't think it's dangerous. I think it's technically challenging. I mean, it's only dangerous if you make it so. You've got brakes and you can choose what speed you want to go. And I think what we saw yesterday was a lot of frustration coming out because he couldn't handle it and he was very angry, probably with himself, really, and he was just verbalising that. But this is part of the sport, the technical and tactical and the bravery. It's all part of the sport. Uh, and I think these kind of uh, descents should definitely still be here. Yeah, before we're too hard on him, though, we should note that, of course, he lost a teammate this year uh, in the Giro d'Italia. Wouter Weyland uh, died crashing on a descent, so obviously safety is uppermost in his mind. Do you think that perhaps it's affecting his mentality to, to the point where, you know, it's playing on his mind and he's already thinking himself um, into losing time before he's even got here? I think everybody who saw that crash, it reminded, be they spectator or competitor, it reminded them of just how close to the limit you are and what the consequences can be. Interestingly, though, with that crash, it was a high-speed descent uh, in, in, a, in a straight line, so a lot of, lot of speed involved. This one, because it's so technical, it's going to be lower speed, so in a sense, it's actually safer. And, of course, uh, it's dry today, which is good news for everybody. No summit finish, but some steep alpine climbs, which of course means some steep alpine descents. The intermediate sprint comes between two third category coals, then it's over the Col de Mont Genève into Italy and up over 2,000 metres to Sestriere. From Sestriere to Pinerolo is essentially one long descent, except for the detour up the sharp little climb just seven kilometres from the end that Andy Schleck is objecting to. So who knows, that may turn out to be bigger than Sestriere and Mont Genève put together. Now, it's rare these days that the finish town of one stage is also the start of the next, but Gap is the first of two in a row on this year's tour. 170 riders still in the race, among them one man who's already turned his impressive Tour de France performance so far into a new three-year contract with Sky. Well ...over Fofanoff, and Fofanoff is coming, but Perez has got to stick to his guns here because this is a good climb, out of sight, maybe out of mind. Perez heading up towards the summit, he is still clear. And we're looking at Perez now with the wall on his left shoulder, but coming up is Dmitry Fofanov, but he's still got, according to our... Oh, they've stopped telling us time. Now 23 seconds, Sylvain Chavanel is trying to make a move. This is from the front group, remember. Yeah, Sylvain Chavanel, the champion of France in the red, white and blue. He wants to get some glory out of the Tour de France. He had a very unlucky first week. He almost abandoned the race because of an injury, but his team manager encouraged him as the champion of France to stay in the Tour de France. So, calming down a fraction now. They're looking at around about 20 seconds. Uh, they are pulling back slowly to this lone leader, Ruben Perez. Well, a little bit further back down the main field, there is a charge of the light brigade down into the valley as we now start to see the main leaders setting themselves up for this very steep climb. The leaders, uh, Evans, uh, Andy Schleck, uh, Alberto Contador, Thomas Vogler, they all realise how dangerous it's going to be, the pos pos position of this climb down towards the run into the line five kilometers to go to the summit that's just about three miles uh, Julian Elfares uh, makes a slight move now he's been chased down by Rabobank so the situation still there uh, Ruben Perez leads uh, Dimitri Fofanov by 15 seconds in there then in fact it's just all starting to come back together because this is Dimitri Fofanov in the turquoise jersey of team Astana Race Radio telling me that uh, Levi Leipheimer has been dropped in the main field a little bit further down the slopes uh, as Fofanov uh, continues, insists that he can pull back the leader, Ruben Perez, looks over his shoulder. This is a good move for Perez now because once they make the junction, the average speed of this chasing group will start to go down a fraction. Ruben Perez 
He has been at the front of this race since he has tacked on the Col de Sestriere over the ski resort around about an hour and a quarter ago. Well, no trouble today for Mark Cavendish's tick-off. Another day in the Alps, another day for the sprinter is behind him and another day near Paris in green is for him today for sure. But they've still got that one man, Perez Moreno, out in front. There's nobody from the peloton going to reach them now, but who is going to answer? Oh. Crash on the corner, and that might disrupt the peloton there. It hasn't disrupted the peloton. Looks like Alberto Contador might be just behind that group. There's a couple of riders from Saxo Bank, and it was right up at the front. But the guys are taking risks to be in the first 10 or 15 places. Well, it was the way that he fell off, and it could have been Contador trying to pull his bike back there. He didn't fall off. But we'll see from this now. Now, BMC will not know who has attacked there, but they have taken control of the peloton here, which is a good sign for Cadell Evans. And the meanwhile, the remnants of that breakaway is nailing back here Ruben Perez. Well, Ruben Perez, there's about a two or three second advantage here, and we're starting to see that they are pulling back Ruben Perez, who's been extremely brave and courageous to go out on a very long attack. This is uh, Muraviev coming back now, 76. In there still, the Julian Ferez, Sandy Kassar, 131. And, of course, just over to the left, number 114, that is Edouard Bozenhagen. Chavanel Bozenhagen. has gone, Paul. Chavanel has decided as they're coming up to catch Perez, it's time to go and say goodbye. He's dominated the climbs today, the champion of France. He's wanted something out of this Tour de France because, so unlike last year, he's tried and he almost abandoned this race. Now he's going for the stage. And he can go downhill very well indeed. And I'll tell you one thing. France has yet to get themselves a stage victory in the Tour de France, and if it was the champion of France, ah, well, what a day it would be for them. It would be another little piece of the fairy tale history of writing in this year's Tour de France. Sylvain Chavanel, who rides for a Belgian team, is now pushing on. Time for a quick shower, and then push on for the top of the climb. So Chavanel makes the big move, there's a big reaction behind and it's coming from Eddie Bozenhagen just going around the corner there with a the lime green helmet of Team Sky, he's itching for another victory, he knows that if he wants to win he's got to go for it. Now we can see big George Hincapie, second position there, Cadell Evans, behind him it's uh, Andy Schleck, Frank Schleck and there is the yellow jersey, Thomas Vogler. As we get onto the slopes of the climb now, George Hincapie in those white sunglasses is pacing Cadell Evans, followed by Frank Schleck looking very comfortable. Fourth position, Andy Schleck going further up the climb. The man now hoping to try and get the first stage victory for France in this year's Tour de France is Sylvain Chavanel. But look at the man coming out of the shadows just a little bit further back. Edvald Bozenhagen of Norway, second on yesterday's stage, and he knows he has to nail back the Frenchman before the top of this climb. Their advantage is around about uh, 10 to 12 seconds. Just looking back a little bit further, there is the yellow jersey. Thomas Vokler, no problems at all for him. As we can see, uh, Chris Anker Sorensen uh, there. I can just see the bobbing head of Alberto Contador, so he's looking very comfortable. Also, Arnold, Arnold uh, Jean Jonasson, the young rider from FDJ, is looking to consolidate his position in the best young rider classification. But the white jersey of Rigoberto Urran, the leader of that competition, he is solid in there too. 16 seconds is the advantage now of these two leaders over the remnants of their breakaway group. Uh, Sylvain Chavanel, champion of France, a uh, red, white and blue. Number 114 is Eddie Bozenhagen. He was so disappointed to get beaten yesterday. I wouldn't be too disappointed to get beaten by a world champion, but he knows Tor Hushoff extremely well. So. Julian Alvarez in the red jersey dropping back. Um, Muraviev, number 76, he too can't stand the pace of this very nasty little climb. We're looking at 11 kilometres to get ourselves to the finishing line. We're at 8 kilometres to go once we summit the climb. Everyone looking back, looking to see uh, who's in danger, who's uh, having difficulties and when should we launch an attack. Well, he tries and he tries and he tries again, and now Edward Boysenhagen has got himself the head of the race this time. Well, I tell you one thing, Phil, the Sky need to understand this man could be the crown in their duel over the next couple of years because he's extremely talented. You know, he's only been a professional for three or four years and he's already got 51 victories to his credit. Well, he was a favoured team on the HTC squad. Sky signed him up and put him on their squad, and now it looks as though he's really maturing in the Tour de France. And there's no reaction, he saved everything till last half of the spectators on Norwegian here. 
as we found out, and he's now pushing on. It's incredible how two Norwegian riders are dominating. Tor Hushoft has won two stages, and Boisenhagen so far has won one. And I'm not sure they've got the answer to this attack. Well, he's a tough character. You know, he's only 24 years of age, and as I say, Phil, he has got so many victories under his belt. He could well be looking at another one here. Not too many so far this season, just two. But one of those a stage in the Tour de France, the other one a national championships. Well, we've gone back to the peloton now. This is Sylvester Smith here, the workhorse for Ivan Basu, who's in second wheel. Off to our left there is uh, Cadell Evans. And where is Andy Schleck? He's just behind Cadell Evans. Contador not at the front at the moment. High rhythm up this hill, but no obvious moves just yet. There's another one, and that's the champion of France has gone again, Chavanel. This is the main front group, don't forget. Chavanel is itching to get a victory for France here in the Tour de France. We mentioned before, Phil, two Norwegians in the Tour, and they've already got three stage victories. 45 Frenchmen in the Tour, and their count so far is zero, and that's why Chavanel has gone out in pursuit of Bosenhagen. Well, that one looks as though it has uh, finished off uh, Dmitry Moraev of Team Radio Shack. This is the Norwegian boy, briefly, looking back to the main field as well, or the main chase, rather. That is Chavanel up front as well. Contador still in the main field, off the front of the peloton. As uh, now it is a different sort of a move here, and also still doing the work at the front of the peloton is Schmidt for Ivan Basso. We're looking at the leader on the road as he continues to climb up the main climb. Boysenhagen of Norway looking once more for a Norwegian victory in the Tour de France. This time, though, the Brits might claim a little bit because he rides for Team Sky. Well, Eddie Bosenhagen sees the banner over the road now, indicating 10 kilometres to go, but Phil, that is still two kilometres to the summit of this climb. If he can summit with a 15 or 20 second advantage, he should be able to hold that all the way down to the finish. Well, he's been in break after break. He's had one stage win to show for it. He was very upset with his second place yesterday, outwitted by his countryman, Tor Hushoff. And here he is, he's gone again. Well, Phil, I'm pretty sure that uh, a little bit further down at the bottom of that climb, Alberto Contador was slowed down by that accident, but he was able to pick his way around the remnants of the guys on the floor, and he's now comfortably installed in about 10th position in the main field. Well, they're keeping a high tempo in the peloton, but they're not uh, launching any attack yet. They've got to be vigilant as well on the way down, and Cadell Evans is an ex-Mountain Bike World Cup winner on two occasions. He seems to like that he sends uh, this time. This is the faithful workman in the mountains for Ivan Basso in second place, Sylvester Schmidt on the front. Uh, Basso, I thought, might have won today, but in fact, he's too far behind the escapers uh, to address this matter now. 5.03 is still the gap between the peloton and the one man out front, Edvald Boysenhagen. Well, I make the gap for Boysenhagen around about 15 seconds to Sylvain Chavanel as he's tried to go once again. But again, you see somebody's gone straight over the top of him. I think uh, Sylvain Chavanel made the first move of the day, then all of a sudden he didn't quite have that power required to stay with this youngster. Well, I think that was uh, Martin Jangeli who's just gone for Rabobank over the top. This man's just getting on with his job. He's still got one and a half kilometres to climb up to the summit. There's the Italian flag. That's where we are. But this man very definitely comes from Norway and rides for a British team. And you see how narrow the roads are too, and they've got to come down this on the other side, which takes them back into town. A very, very difficult and tortuous descent today. The next sign that he will see on the side of the road will be the sign indicating one kilometre left to go to the summit, and Sil Sylvain Chevenel is trying again, is using a monster gear. Now, this race field, this stage today, could be decided on the descent, and Chevenel himself is no mean descender. And Chevenel might be just trying to hold him in, in range for the descent here, because Sandy Kassar couldn't hang on to the wheel of Chevenel, one kilometre to go. For Edward Boysenhagen now, remember that this is the team that lost their team leader on day seven of the Tour de France when Bradley Wiggins crashed and broke his collarbone. And we'll never know where he would have finished in this year's Tour de France, but they had to totally reset the sights. And so far, they have the lead in the best young rider competition, the white jersey with Rigoberto Uran. And now they're looking for the stage win today with Edward Boysenhagen. That rider just in front is second place rider on the road, and that's the rider from Saw Sojerson, and he is uh, Jonathan Hiver, and he's looking at a roundabout. Oh, it's not at Jangley, then there's another rider in front, Hiver. So this race is split up one by one by one. Yeah, this is it. In fact, it's Balk Malama who's gone away. The one man that hasn't done too much action in the breakaway. So he they had two riders in the breakaway, Rabobank. And this is Balk Malama 
who has gone forward. Now there's a launch in the attack. Uh, we're hearing from the peloton. There it is. The attack by Alberto Contador. And look at the acceleration. This man is beginning to look like the old Alberto Contador. Andy Schleck has got his back wheel. And can you believe Tommy Vokler has got his back wheel as well? Well, Tommy Vokler right there. This is the kind of climb that Alberto Contador likes. It's a steep climb. Uh, three kilometres to go to the summit for the main field. That's when it kicks into 10%. Cadell Evans is there on the left-hand side. That was the first of a salvo of attacks I would expect from Alberto Contador here this afternoon. Just look at this. It's like these two are climbing up the Col de Tourmalet last year, side by side. Andy Schleck now just eases in front of Contador. And uh, Voigtler just watches the move. He had no problem there. Neither did Cadell Evans. As they move back up, Pierre Roland comes up to give uh, the yellow jersey some team support here. They've slowed it down again. Well, over on the left-hand side, uh, Yella Venendet, the rider from uh, Omega Farm, a lot of looking very comfortable. Race situation now. Eddie Bosenhagen in first place. He's been changed by Hivert of Saw Sojerson. And in third place on the road now at 20 seconds is Bauk Molema. So he makes his way through this crowd and uh, through this uh, shaded part of this climber, the very difficult climb, the, the final climb of the day, the Pramartino now, and once he goes over the top, he has five miles to go to the finishing line, eight kilometres. Here is the summit of the climb. So it's over the top for Edward Bolsenhagen. He wins the last climb of the day, but more importantly, will he win his stage? And that would be his second stage after he won in Redon. He is eight kilometres to go. Hivert has come up alongside Bauk Molima. Yeah, these two riders now, Phil, are looking at second and third place on the road. Now Andy Schleck has a little dig at the front. He's just, I think this is more psychological than anything else. But this is the acceleration of Contador. And yet another attack by Alberto Contador. This is what he tried yesterday and in the end it worked. Now, this time, I think Andy Schleck is much more attentive. I think the mood is here to try and just get a little lead over Schleck and then really test him on this very, very dangerous descent. But just look at Thomas Volkler, the leader of the Tour de France. He's mixing with these boys and he is living with them. Frank Schleck over the top. This is the duo of Frank Schleck and Andy Schleck. And this is what they have to do if they want to try and recuperate some of the time they lost yesterday to Alberto Contador. But this is just a tempo that this was not really a major attack coming from Frank well, Schleck. And still, Cadell Evans is sitting there watching the moves. This has got to be an hors d'oeuvre for tomorrow. And the massive three or category mountains that face these riders on their journey back to France from Italy. They are just addressing each other. They again are advertising who the prize winners will be in Paris. We don't know the order. Just take it. Frank Schleck, Andy Schleck, Contador, Sanchez. These are the boys. And well, so as the race continues down now, it's a very dangerous descent down now as they make the twist through the tees. Uh, through the trees here, it's a difficult descent and they've got to take it very, very carefully. 4.53, the race for the first place is now on the escape down the hill. But these corners are very, very dangerous indeed. And they've got to watch the bends down here. Well, the result of the mountain, Edward Boyce and Herger, Bonimer and Yvette. And there's a massive crash here now. This looks like Galano has gone. Yes, Iver, Iver, it wasn't Bart Malema, it's Iver who went down, he was taking too many risks down this corner. Watch this one more time, he was so fast, wrong line into the corner, he's very lucky to get a soft landing there, and Bart Malema gets just around him on that corner. Well, confirmation, John Iver, who was going down the mountain there with Bart Malema, has just overcut that one and lost the row completely. The peloton are going to have to watch. This is, as we warned, a very, very dangerous descent here. Boysenhagen is controlling it well as he continues to go to the finish. 6.2 kilometres to race, less than four miles for the man from Norway who flies the colours of Team Sky. And he's clipping these corners as well. He's taking all the risks. And he has to here as the peloton come up to the summit. It's just one kilometre to go now for the peloton. A little bit of common sense because the counter-attacks have suddenly stopped and the heads are all together. Ivan Basso is bringing the riders up towards the summit, but on the way down, there's a few red flags required because the descent is living up to its name as being highly dangerous. Christian Vandervel, 58, Tommy Danielson, 52. They're still in contact with the group, protecting the overall position of Tommy Danielson in ninth place overall. Andy Schleck comes to the front. So these guys, they're looking at each other. This is almost like a game of poker as they put the cards on the table. Who's going to go next? But I don't think this climb is long enough and hard enough for these guys to open it up 
and it won't be as dangerous a descent as it was yesterday for Andy Schleck because we're here in the dry. It's a long way down and it's very, very narrow roads at the moment. Boysenhagen is the man leading the charge home and he's looking good for the win right now. Blue skies over the road, five kilometres to go. Edward Boysenhagen is free to fly down to the bottom right now, but they're trying to get on terms with him. The peloton is, uh, or well, the rather, the chase group being led by uh, El Ferez here. In fact, we've gone back to the main group of the peloton here. They're starting to pick up riders out front. Well, this is Rem Terame on the front for Kofidis. He sees this as a great opportunity to try and have a crack at the leader in white jersey competition for him. He's second in that competition, but a little bit further back, I noticed that the white jersey of Rigoberta Uran was still in contact with the group, only just. Well, he's a Colombian rider, a young rider, and he's having to fight now in the Tour de France to keep that white jersey on the shoulders of him and for Team Sky, who at the moment are heading for race victory down in Pinarolo. As the peloton here now will shortly begin their descent. Now, everybody is dodging the corners down here. They're going to have to take great care, and at the time, paradoxically, they're going to have to take risks as well if they might gain time down here, as, as Evans and Contador did yesterday. They have gone over the top. The leader is still Edward Boysenhagen. He's being chased by Bauk Molimer of Rabobank. Hivert, we think, has gone up himself. Now, what's happened He's here? gone off again. He went right behind the barriers there. This kid is taking so many risks on the descent, and he was very, very lucky there was an exit pop tra strategy well, for him. Oh, good job. They left the gate open today when they parked the car, because that was Jonathan Hivert who's gone into the car park. Anyway, there's still two riders chasing, and the chasers must be coming up on him. This is well, the way down to Pinarolo. It is a really, really difficult descent as we race back up now to pick up the Norwegian Hagen. Bosenhagen uh, now looking at around about a 20-second advantage field over Bauk Malema. I think it'd be an awful long way back to Jonathan Hiver because he's been off the road roughly yeah. on three occasions. The long straight road, it leads uh, to Pinarolo. It could lead to victory and in as many days, another victory for Norway, unheard of in the Tour de France and also for Team Sky, trying to repair the damage done when they lost Bradley Wiggins on Stage 7 with that accident. They've tried every day to win stages, and now he's got the best chance. Well, uh, second on the stage yesterday, Phil, uh, remarkably. He was a little bit smarting by the defeat, but this is not a surprise to see by me because uh, no. Thomas Vokler is one of the great descenders. I hope he doesn't take too many risks because this is a tricky descent, but well, Vokler is one of the best. If you're of nervous disposition, then look away because he does go down well, but look at that, he overcooked the corner. They were through on his inside there. Samuel Sanchez coming through as well, followed by Contador, I think, and now they've got to break really hard for the left-hand turn. They are... What they're trying to do is take time out of the race leaders on the descent. Sammy Sanchez is one of the best when it goes to going uphill, but he's also a crack descender. Coming across, I can just see a black and white jersey. That would be one of the riders of Leopard Trek, but which one is it? As Sammy Sanchez pushes it into these corners. A little touch of the brakes and feather on the bends, and Sammy Sanchez has gone wide. I don't know where our camera has gone. He's suddenly cut away from that. That was a difficult situation. They've gone over to look at the Hagen. A Bosenhagen here, but the chase is really on. Well, this is Alberto Contador in the last days of the Tour de France, returning to his very best. He is trying to take his time back, going downhill, not uphill. Well, uh, this is all about the Tour de France, and people have said to win the Tour, you've got to be great in every different concept of the sport, whether it's time trialling, climbing, or riding against the clock. You've got to be able to go downhill fast as well, and Alberto Contador is certainly doing that. You have got to admire this man now doing this. He's lost time in 16 days of racing. He's got to get it back wherever the opportunity presents itself. He is taking enormous risks here for what will only be a few seconds at the end. Well, just a little bit further back, you see the sort of damage that's being done at the arrière du peloton, the back end of the main field. Unbelievable descending skills by Alberto Contador, and he's under one kilometre to go now for the leader of the race, Boysenhagen. He's going to get the sought-after stage win, and it's not his first, but his second stage win of the week of the year. In the, his first Tour de France, he has been absolutely superb. He won in Redon, and now he's going to win in Italy in Pinerolo. 
Well, I'll tell you one thing, Phil, uh, if there were any people left at all up there, right up there in uh, Norway, I think they've all got the boat down because they'll be down here for the weekend to watch these guys because the Norwegian, two bike riders in the race, and we're looking here at stage victory number four. Yes, and it, was, it wasn't Rodon, it was Ligier where he won in, as we started our journey south in northern France, and that was his first day out for Sky. This will be his second repairing uh, all the time the credibility of this incredible team Sky who in their second Tour de France have really flowered and it really was a sporting tragedy they lost their Bradley Wiggins with that broken collarbone because they may have had a man on the podium in Paris as well but right now he has tried and tried and tried again and he succeeded for the second time Edvard Boysenhagen straightens his Sky racing jersey and gets the result the amazing thing is, Phil, they came with one strategy and halfway through, have a look yep. and there, well, this Thomas Volkman's got into the, the same thing. car park as Hiver did, that's the yellow jersey, trying perhaps a little bit too hard. Well, you know, you have to be very careful. Thomas Vogler was taking risks there to try and get himself back up, and he's being pushed back onto the race route there by one of the spectators at the side of the road. Well, he might even own the house, and thanks heaven he left the gate open, because that's two riders we know have been out into the car park. And now the Maillot Jaune continues to race to preserve his Maillot Jaune today. He should do that as we come down. It's Bauk Malama who's coming home in second place here. But it is such an incredible chase off the mountain too as the riders start to finish. Uh, Voigtler is did a bit of a bunny hopper through that car park, by the way. The sprint for third place now as they race up to the line, taken out by Sandy Kassar down at the finish. As the riders now continue to go mano a mano, Contador racing alongside Samuel Sanchez as they continue to go down towards the finish. They're, gain, they're gaining time, but this time, Paul, they're not with Cadell Evans. Well, this is two men from Spain, two men who work together. They know each other extremely well, and Alberto Contador has found himself a fine ally in the Olympic champion, Sammy Sanchez. He's very good at going downhill, but now these two men are working together to try and put time between themselves and this man, the overall leader, Thomas Vogler, who took so many risks on the descent there to try and get himself back to the Contador-Sanchez train. Well, well done to Alberto Condor. This has been a treacherous descent, but here they are projecting themselves ahead of the peloton. Look at your time here. He looks across at Sammy Sanchez. These boys are rivals, but friends, different teams, but know each other pretty well as they work together, racing into Pinarolo. The winner is home, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. They're all home. They're all watching this on television. The Mayo Jean's been off the road and in the car park. He's still trying to recoup time. I think he'll keep enough in hand to win, to lead the Tour de France tomorrow. But Tommy Voigtler is having to repair the damage as we go up the road to Contador and Samuel Sanchez. Tour de France champion and Olympic champion together. Well, that should be the group there of Cadell Evans there, the black and red jerseys of Team BMC Racing. Uh, you can see this is Tommy Danielson also trying to keep himself in the race this afternoon with Ivan Basso there, number 91. A little bit further forward, the yellow jersey. In front of the yellow jersey is Cadell Evans, I believe, who started the day a minute 45 seconds behind Thomas Vokler in the standings. And that's why Vokler can keep that group inside. He's wisely slowing down for Tommy Danielson's group there to come in. That's looking down there. That was the uh, the uh, group of Cadell Evans and Andy Schleck. They've gone under, I couldn't read that, 4K to go, I think it was. Vokler wisely is waiting for the Tommy Danielson group here now, and they'll work together and see if they can close down. They look like Heimar Zubeldia coming up there to Thomas Vokler, but these two men this afternoon, look at the faces on these two guys. They know this is, it's all about seconds. It could all be just seconds going into the final time trial around Grenoble between Cadell Evans, Alberto Contador and Sammy Sanchez. And these few seconds here could win or lose somebody the Tour de France this afternoon. Sanchez sits fifth overall in the Tour de France. Contador sits sixth. The same two men have gone together to try and help each other gain time. They're under one kilometre to go as they swing into town, as they continue to gain time. Deja vu as yesterday, but this time, no Cadell Evans gaining time. Contador is pulling back a little bit of his disadvantage on the descent. He's looking, he looked over his shoulder there to see if anybody was in sight. He is power. I tell you what, Phil, this is setting up to be an incredible next 48 hours once we start to go up to the high spot. Contador normally adores the mountains going upwards, but not necessarily going downwards. The survivors here, Nicholas Roach on the left-hand side there. As they come up, and that's Martin Jangeli behind the Nicholas Roach. These boys are racing up to the line now. And uh, Divert is there too. Roach comes home. What time has gone by? 4.02 is the gap. That won't make too much difference. This, though, at the return of 
the return of uh, the Schlecks of Court Contador on the run into the finish. These boys are going to come in in the same time. Evans is there as well. It's a wipeout on the finish line. They've gained absolutely nothing. Except on Thomas Vogler, who's the who's yellow jersey there. at the start of the day. He probably has lost himself 15 to 20 that seconds. That is amazing. That is amazing. They all came together on the running. Thomas Vogler will lose a little bit of time here, but all of the big favourites suddenly came together in the last couple of hundred metres. He's got to lose a minute 45. He won't lose that. He'll keep his maillot jaune and he'll fight to the line to save every single second of it. Vogler keeps maillot jaune. We think his loss will be 25 seconds. They're nibbling at his jersey, but they're not getting it off his shoulders yet. In the end, 27 seconds was the official nibble count from the timekeepers. But everyone was a three-course meal behind Edvald Bersenhagen. He took a great solo win ahead of Bauka Molima. Sandy Kazar beat Julian Elfarez and Sylvain Chavanel in the separate sprint for the French stage win. Then it was two Kazakhs, either side of a pole as it were, Dmitry Fofanov, Maciej Petersky and Dmitry Muraviev. After the Schleck, Frank ended up leading in the group containing Samuel Sanchez, Alberto Contador, Cadell Evans, Damiano Cunigo and his brother. Two notable names not in there were Thomas Verkler and Ivan Basso, who came in with a group four minutes 53 behind the winner, nearly behind the other big names. Talking of which, let's hear from some of the big names. I think it's not a secret that everybody's seen on TV that it was uh, very dangerous again today and uh, yeah. Unfortunately, another guy uh, lost some seconds or maybe the tour because of, uh, of a downhill. And uh, this time it was Thomas who, who had to pay for it. And uh, I don't think any athlete want to see that or win the Tour de France or lose the Tour de France because of a downhill. Uh, yes, I mean, it was, uh, was a really dangerous uh, descent. Um, imagine that today, I mean, we had the sunshine, but in the rain. I don't know how the rider would have gone down there, but yeah, we were lucky with the weather today. Tampoco. Tampoco he notado mucho, mucho riesgo, o sea, ya que era una bajada peligrosa, he ido siempre en todo momento bajo, bajo control, sin pasar los límites, y bueno, ha sido bueno, he visto que, que se ha abierto poco con, con la gente de atrás, y que es verdad que atrás iban muchos corredores, entonces era más fácil para recortarnos a mí y, y a Samuel, pero mira, lo importante es intentarlo todos los días. My confidence is good, um, yes, I didn't feel super, to be honest. Uh, not in the uphill was... Uh, I don't really like the cold so much, uh, like it was yesterday in the rain. But today I felt actually really good in the climb. Uh, the attack and was actually okay, uh, you know, following without uh, any problems. And then I want to go, uh, you know, with the first in the downhill to be safe, and uh, that's why I did. Andy, I'm, it's going to be. I'm sorry, it's going to be cold on the Galibier tomorrow, Andy. Yeah, yeah, but we finish up with something different. Still two leaders in the team. Yeah, I mean, the, the plan we have uh, for us, uh, that's what we want to do, we still have the two leaders. Or two layers, possibly. Mark Cavendish finished safely at the back of the autobus, wasting no more energy on the stage than absolutely necessary after his titanic one-point intermediate sprint. It's now the Isle of Man 4, Norway 4 in stage wins, incidentally, two each for Turusoft and Edvel Bersenhagen, now fulfilling all the predictions of brilliance that people have been making about in the past couple of years. I was feeling great the whole day and I was, I really wanted to win so I got some extra power from that and, uh, and also from all the region fans around the, around the course, it's amazing so it's so nice to win and it's really great. Now here's how today's stage affects things at the top. Thomas Verkler still has the yellow jersey, but after today's nibbling, his lead is down to 1 minute 18 over Cadell Evans. Frank Schleck is at a minute 22, 1 minute and 14 seconds ahead of his brother. Samuel Sanchez is at 2.59, Alberto Contador 3.15 and Damiano Cunigo at 3.34. Other than creeping up on Verkler, the relative time gaps between the big names remain the same, except for Ivan Basso, who slips to 8th. 